Yeah. Yo, this is White Label Radio Classic Hip Hop for the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. My name is Mellow One, and you can hear a smile on my voice because I have a legendary group in the building. The group home is in the building. What up, yes, fellas? Sir. How you doing, brother? Introduce yourself to the crowd, man. Well, I'm Lil Dap, and this is Mellow Captain Nutcracker. Introduce yourself, man. This is the Nutcracker, you know what I'm saying? Boy, Nutcracker boy, shorty boy, in the yeah. building. <laughs> original, original, yes, we are here. Thank you for having us here. Thank you we probably had to introduce y'all because your voice is so unique that they should, if they're a hip hop head, they should know that voice, right? Mm. They should, but you know, you know, we share, you know. But well, people have done some time, right? Yeah, you know. <laughs> the new generation wouldn't know, you know. Yeah, nah, it's all good. But so let's start. Let's, yo, like I said off air, I'm a fan. I, I'm, a, I'm a fan. I was the guy that actually went to the record store and actually bought the record once I saw a video I heard the mix shows play it or whatever. So I'm just excited to have y'all in the building. So Thank you. let's Thank start you. at the beginning. How did you guys, where y'all from? Y'all from New York? What part of New York? All right. I'm from Brooklyn. Okay. I'm from the Bronx. Bronx. How did y'all get together? Well, I used to go up, to, well, uh, Peace out to my man Tommy Hill and peace out to my man Gusmo, you know, they used to bring uh, Guru around the way and things of that nature. They used to like, oh, we know a rapper, we got a rapper, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay, okay. So, you know, I used to be in the streets a lot, you know what yeah. I mean? I used to be around the house, you know, I used to be around the people you love to hate, more or less. And, um, and you know, when I met him, man, he was like, Dr. he be like, the, you know, like the rappers, man. You know, like, the, back then it was like, you had Kane popping, you had Coochie Rap, everything. The Road to the Rich, like, you know, how a lot of things popping, like, yeah. you know, things in that nature, like, way back then, you know. And uh, when they brought him, brought him around, I'm like, man, he's not no rapper. He looked like, the, you know, like he's going to school or something, man. <laughs> what year was this? This was like 1988, and okay. that was in, you know, and... You know, I had my little motorcycle and stuff. I was looking fly, you know. Looking fly, you know. I had my little jewelry on. Was back. you rapping then? No, I wasn't rapping. You wasn't rapping? No, I wasn't rapping, man. I wasn't doing you was just in the streets just hanging out? I was one of the people you love to hate. Yeah, less, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. But, uh, you know, I would have my looks. You know what I mean? Back then, you had to have your looks. You had your jewelry. You, had your, you know, that yeah. street thing. You, didn't have, you know, you was in, around those type of big time people and things like that. You might be a person, I might just go to the store and get a thousand dollars, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. it was that era, it was the 88, it was the 90s and stuff, you know, so when they brought Guru around, you know, that's, you know, as I felt about it, you yeah. know, but uh, for some reason, I, I just felt his energy, he was like, you know, I guess because I turned, you know, I, I, I was mad, I was upset, I was like, I thought he was that rapper, like, guys coming around the way with this wax record and stuff and yeah. like uh, boom 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 he got a rapper and I'm like he ain't no rapper Red Alert was popping at that time I'm like he not playing it <laughs> so I was like boom so you know so I was like oh these niggas playing games so, so Red Alert wasn't popping wasn't was playing it, 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 wasn't. it wasn't nah he wasn't playing like Google, Google was like shopping his music at yeah, the time yeah. you know what I mean so um we just started like, you know, my man brought me back around again and, and we just started hanging out and stuff. And then um, I see he was doing things for like kids for like, um, that was like crack babies and dope pink baby, you know, yeah. boop homes and things like that, working with people like that, you know. So that got me like, oh, I'm like, excuse me, I was just like more or less like, you know, wow. You do things like that, and it's like, like, yeah, that's my side job, so I, you know, doing this music, you know. I was like, all right, then, you know, that's how we got kind of cool. I said, I understand that. I know people that come from that, you know yeah. what I mean? So, you know. So when when did you start rapping, and when did you, when, when did you go to Mel? Google moved to the Bronx at the time, and okay. he left Brooklyn. Okay. You know, that's when Brooklyn came, you know, and he had Brooklyn do Gangstar, you know, that's yeah. how everything, I'm telling you how, you know, how I met him, you know. Yeah. You know, so that's how you got Brooklyn. You okay. know, and we were from Brooklyn. I'm from East New York. We were staying in Pepper Stuyvesant at the time. With, you know, my man, like I said, my man Tommy Hill and Gusmo and, and their man Damo, they used to all be, you know, going to the studios with him after he get off work. Blah, blah, it's funny blah. because you said those names and he said those names in songs or whatever. So it's like I know those people because he shouted them out in songs on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, you know, with the people that used to be around. Things and I need, that's how I got the mix and stuff like that. And then when he moved to the Bronx, 
That's how I met Malachi. Malachi used to live across the street from him and stuff like that, you know. So he used to come over on the time, you know, he used to see his video, you uh -huh. know, when, when we did Words of Manifest and okay. stuff like that. I remember that video. Yeah. Was, was you the one where the, you, you was wearing the Ewings in that video, right? The yeah. Ewing shoes. Uh, yeah, no, no, that was uh, just to get a rep. Just to get a rep. So yeah. I'm gonna tell you, when we was on the West Coast and we couldn't buy them shits, we was like, "Yo, what the fuck are those right there?" Yeah, and Ewing. we made it a point. I made it a point to find out where we can get those shits because you was wearing them in that video. Yeah, that video really popped off at that time. That shit was ill. Y'all, y'all yeah. had the and then the jackets too, the starter jackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all made niggas want to rock them. That was that era. Yeah. You, you know, LA had its mark and we had our mark. You know, East Coast, West Coast go hand in hand. It's like a glove. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean when it comes to that music. So um, even the South. You know, and yo, Mel. So you from you from the Bronx, right? So yeah. you've been rapping since day one. When you met Guru, you you was already rapping, or did you? Nah, I was nah, just. Nah, he was the he was, he was a, a fan <laughs> because he used to come by the house, right? Let me tell you, right? Yeah. So I used to come all the way from Brooklyn on the train. Yeah. On the Ford train. So it take me like an hour to change to get up to the Bronx. I'm like, damn, this nigga's a far. Boom. I go up there. I got my little bit of the that way. I go by myself. <laughs> so I'm by myself up there going up to the Bronx. Yeah. Boom. And Mel used to be always sitting in front of Goo's house. And I be waiting on Goo. So I'm like, who is this nigga? You didn't know him at the time. I didn't even know. Him. Oh, okay, okay. So I said, this dude, bro. So he he be there every other day, every other day. I said, yo, I think he, I thought he was stick up kid or something. And was he cock diesel like he was? He was in his cool, little cool, frame. Cool, you know what I'm saying? He was even more bigger. Yeah, okay. he was more frame. He was, he was in his frame. So okay. I'm like I thought he was a stick up kid. Yeah. You know, cause he always be in the hallway and waiting by the door. So I said, nah, this is getting close. It went from outside to inside the building. <laughs> so I said, hold up. You know, Goo start calling me like, I don't know, this dude was always over here waiting. And he's like, oh, I don't know, he's always sitting by my dog. And I'm like, right. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be up there early. Boom, boom, boom. When you get up work, I'm going to call you. When I get up, before I get up work, boom, you just meet me up there. Oh, boom. Then I get on the train, bam, get up, boom. And, and then before you know, you know, like he said, he was a fan. So, you know, it's just kind of crazy. Like, it's kind of ironic how we all met, but... So it's how did y'all? So how did y'all go from that to actually starting the group? Starting the group, yeah. Oh, oh man, oh, that was just the beginning of that. You know what I mean? You know, I'm putting in a lot of work in. You know, what I mean? yeah, yeah. Around that man and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So you got to just to get a rap and everything else. You know, once Google left the Bronx, you know, he moved back into Brooklyn, back at Marcella's house. So, you know, we called it the group home. You know, once we had a lot of rappers coming by. So His you know, house was called the group home? We called it the group home. Oh, okay, okay. That, that, name that was going to be the name of our group. Okay. We called it the group home, you know what I mean? And who was it? Who was part of the group home at that time, or who was you going to make the group of? Was no, the Jesus? house was called the group home, I you know you. what I mean? Like, everybody come meet up, you know what I mean? Okay. You know, people, you know, you had J. Rudy Damager, you had Big Show, you had uh, Premier, you know. And us as the group, as the group home, but we just called the house the group home. That was the hangout spot. So when when did you start rapping? When 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 did y'all both start rapping? When that started to when the group yeah, home yeah, thing? Yeah 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 yeah. When we got that going on, living at Brock and Marcella's house and things of that nature, that's when we start getting things more like um, okay, J Rude Damage gonna be J Rude Damage. Uh, you the group home, boom, you got gang star, bam, so. That was like our foundation, you know what I yeah. mean? And uh, that's where we can start growing and things like that. What was the first was the what was the first song that you guys recorded together? Uh So Called Friends. Did that ever come out? Yeah, you put that out. Okay. Wax. Okay. Go we'll press that up. That's how you got um Come Clean and all that and uh Big Ship song. We put out um So Called Friends, press it up, boom, press something like fifteen hundred pieces. A wax and um, we handled it. So we went to when, DJ, when did DJ. when did y'all know this was something you was gonna do for a living? I, this is what I wanted to do. You know what I mean? When did you realize it was it was actually viable? Viable. Uh, I knew. I, I knew. You know the work we were putting in a lot of work. Uh huh. So at that time, I knew it was a matter of time for us to you know to shine. You know, because we were putting in work. You know, we felt good pain as far as. He used to work nine to five. He, you know, he had his nine to five job, but his passion was music, hip hop, and yeah. stuff like that. And I felt his pain. I, I believed in what he was trying to do. 
I left the streets. I used to take my street money, and he'd have his work money, and we would put that together, like, and run around, you know, and stuff like that, you know, like, yeah, I believed in what he was trying to do. I always believed, and, you know, that's when, that's why you got group home and things in that nature, yeah. little dap and all that, you know, because, you know, R.I.P., he was, you know, he was, he helped us out with a lot of things because we both had that passion. You know, I felt his passion. At yeah. first, I didn't. Uh -huh. Because, you know, it was that time and era, you know, you know, with the hip hop scene and things of that nature. And, you know, you have to look right, you have to be right. You have yeah. To, you, know, you have to look like a right. So during that time, so maybe Mel, you can ask this question. During that time, like, what was uh, the energy like during that time? That was like in the mid 90s, right? Early 90s. Yeah. What was the energy like? While y'all was forming this group home, J. Rue, Big Shug, what was the energy like? Oh, the, the energy. Give us the mic so we can hear you. Oh, oh, the energy was was extremely. It was it was fantastic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. it was it was like man, you know, this is like a dream come true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I grew up watching BDP, Cool G, Rap, yeah. Big Daddy Kane, Rakim. So now I'm on a scene like the way them niggas. Is you know yeah, what I'm saying, yeah. and I'm doing it with with Gangstar on stage. You know what I'm saying, yeah, yeah. and I'm doing it like that. You know, uh -huh. and it was like fantastic. And during that time, like during that time, everybody was super lyrical. One thing I liked about you guys is you was more relatable. Your lyrics was relatable. It wasn't like you was not trying to outthink me. I was. It was dope ass beats and rhymes that we can relate to, and I can look at it and say, yo. That either I can relate to you or I can relate to your your story. Like my man is just like him, whatever. Was that something you guys constantly did, or is it something that's kind of naturally just happened? That's naturally happened because uh, that album "Living Proof" I brought to for me. That actually, as far as the structure of that project and yeah. that album, yeah, yeah, because for me I had a lot of work at at that time. He had a lot of work on it. He had a lot of things on his plate, you know. So. Uh, yeah, we came with ideas and things to give a structure to the album because after Superstar, nobody knew where we were going. And then we started working into Living Proof. I even helped out with that track with him. You know, as far as sitting there, blowing it down, telling, talking, going through the loops, going through the drum, parry, picking, okay, catch that, boom, you boom, 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 just, you know, being Did you know you had a classic when you, when you finished the album? No, I didn't know we had a classic. I just know I was putting in work. You know, so I mean, you know, I was getting my, my, my I got a lot of, you know, personal things. You, you know, know, I heard something recently. I was listening to uh, Primo was on Drink Chats with Nori, and you know, he got a granny with Christina Aguilera for doing that song. He said yeah. that first time he met her, first thing she said was, I like what you did with Group Home. And it blew his mind because that was something that she can relate to that started the conversation to where they actually did project it together. Yeah, yeah. Did you I know mean, that? I mean, I knew about it, but I I already knew, you know, when it came, our work was like, because nobody really even think we was gonna go anywhere. So I already, you know, so I was just like, you know, let's just, you know, you know just give it, you know, get their attention, you know, and how you get people attention is by just keep working. So we kept working and running around, putting in work, and uh, we caught his attention regarding, because he's working, like I say again, he's working with a lot of groups yeah. at that time. So Did you know how legendary he was when he was doing his music? When y'all was sitting there- Yeah, 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 we already knew that. Did you know that? You knew that? This is special. It's kind of like working with Quincy Jones or Dr. Dre or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, but man, he's talented, you know. I mean, yeah, it's talented, you know. You know I mean, yeah, all of us, you know, we, Go a long way with this work, you know what I mean? So, um, like I say, you gotta have a passion for it. Yeah. So, did I know? Yes, I did know because I wouldn't be there. I knew when I met Guru and I felt his energy. His energy is something, you know, it's something you can't see. Yeah. How was Guru? Like, we, we heard a lot of stories about Guru. What was Guru like? He was, that was my brother. He took care of me. You know, he used to live in his house. You know what I mean? Yeah. When I was homeless, he took me in, you know what I mean? These people ain't take me in, you know. A lot of people, they give me, they, just, they talk all this, but yet they don't talk to these people, man. They don't do, you know, yeah. 
Can you tell us a story of something that we've never heard that like can can kind of let us know how Guru was as a person or whatever? Like, I'm sure you have a lot of Guru stories, like something that maybe on the road you did or something like that that kind of that we've never heard that can show like this is what Guru is all about. You got any stories like that? Oh, I got a lot of stories. So here, here's here's what the story did. I got one. I got one story when we was on tour, and. Um, I think we was there, it was us, we, no, we was on the, no, we was on the Tupac, I know, the Digital Underground Tour. Okay. What and year was this? And that was, I don't know what year, like, like early 90s. Early 90s, 90s probably. Early, 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 okay. Digital Underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 91, probably. <coughs> right, yeah. 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 So, and they had Tupac opening up and stuff like that. And, um, Google letting Tupac his car, he had a rental. Uh -huh. And stuff like that. And, you know, two pounds start wilding out in some club. We was in Atlanta, and he smashed the bottle out in front of the club, the Moet bottle, and it was me and my man Big Shook. And then you know the promoter let us in the club. And the dude called me like, Ah, oh, you guys got my car, and, and the brunch was under my name, and blah blah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at Mel laughing. You, you yeah. remember that? You know, I was there. Uh, no, he wasn't there. He, okay. he couldn't go at that time. Okay. I was the first one to go on tour. Okay. Like, so, and he was like, you got to make sure it comes back. So I, I was the one, I got to be on, I was the one to have to be on point. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, damn. You, know, you can't wild out like everybody else. Yeah, I can't have no fun. Yeah. So I'm like, that's some bullshit. But I was getting paid, but I'm like, damn. You know, I right, yo, boom, I go in the club, get two five, then he wanted to get me drunk. <laughs> and Big Shook, Big Shook can tell you about this story. I mean, he wound up getting me drunk, and then the uh, next day I know uh, Big Shook and uh, Tupac was dragging me to the car, and they put me in the back in the room And uh, I remember waking up back to the hotel or something. 